Are you tired of daily firefighting in operations and client deliveries? Are you frustrated with poor employee performance and really get irritated when they come up with nothing but excuses? Does operations suck all your time and you get zero hours in growing your business? Well, single biggest reason for all these above stated problems is lack of systems and tools. Hi guys, I'm Kival Kishan, your business automation coach. Friends, in this video, I'm going to tell you how can you automate your business so that it can run on its own without your presence. And I'm going to tell you six defined steps, which if you follow, you will be able to automate your entire business. So let's get started. Welcome, guys. So before telling you all these steps, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and share this video with as many friends as you can who are actually a business owner as well. So step one is writing number of processes in your business. Now, when it comes to business, we have a lot of processes in terms of sales. We have client onboarding process. We have lead generation process, right? So I'm going to tell you some usual processes with almost each and every business have. And what you can do is you can pick up a pen and paper and start writing down the names of the processes which you think that you have in your business. Ready? Pick up your pen and paper. Let's start noting down. When it comes to sales and marketing, usual processes can be, uh, first of all, lead generation process. How are you getting an inquiry? Most of business owners that I know, okay, in India or outside India, the people who are not systemized, they completely get dependent on referrals. They feel that they do not need to do any marketing. They're living in a myth. Okay. However, here you can just write down in your notebook and pen that lead generation process you need to define. How are you generating the lead? If it is just through referral, at least write this name. Okay. Second process in your sales can be uh, inquiry to customer. When you get a lead, when you get an inquiry, how are you converting that inquiry to your customer? Most of people that I know, when they get an inquiry, they simply write it down on just Excel file or just on a notebook. Okay. And they call the client just for one time that, Hey, sir, I got your reference from this guy. Do you need this product or service? And the person says that, Hey, I'm busy. Just call me tomorrow. And the people, they don't have a proper sales process. They don't have a proper CRM. And that is the reason business owners even forget to take a follow up the next day. And then people come up with the excuse that their sales is going down. So write down that you need to have a sales process as well. So lead generation process and sales process. This two usual processes are available in each and every business in terms of sales and marketing. Okay. If you're coming with any other process, write it down in the comments. Uh, next, in terms of your operations, I'm just going to tell you some usual processes which businesses have in their operational department. And remember, right now we're talking about the step one where you're jotting down the name of the processes that you should have in your business. And then step two, I'll tell you on how to define it. And then till step six, you will understand how to automate all these processes. Okay, let's continue. In operations, if you're into manufacturing, it means you're producing something. So your production process, then your packaging and your client, uh, your dispatch, your delivery process to the client. Okay, it can be processes. If you're into service business, so it can be a project delivery or service delivery process, right? So in simple terms, you can write down either order tracking, order tracking and delivery process or service tracking and delivery process. When I say tracking, it means that you should real time get to know that what is the status of all these orders or the projects or the services and which are on time, which are getting delayed and which are already completed, right? In a lot of businesses which are based out of like which are into construction or manufacturing or trading inventory is also involved so if you're into if you're into manufacturing or trading or construction write down that you need to automate your inventory management process as well then once you deliver the product you need to make sure that you take the client's feedback as well so client feedback process how are you approaching the client how are you asking them to share the feedback right so it is the in terms of the operations clear did you write down the processes in your notebook? Type in the comments, which all process do you find that are relevant for your business and which you're actually serious on automating in your business. Third one, team management, right? We all have team. If you're an entrepreneur who don't have any, who doesn't have any teammates, you're just running your business on your own, means you are your own team, right? 
Now, these videos, these lessons are relevant for people who are just individual entrepreneurs and the ones who are having more than 100 employees as well. I'm into this, you know, I'm helping business owners past eight years on automating the business and I've got clients who are just startups as well and who are well-established manufacturers and traders as well. So let's get back to the step one. Now let's talk about team management. What processes can you define in team? First of all, task delegation process. When I talk about people uh, who, you know, uh, before coming on board to our training programs, when I ask them that, are you satisfied with your team's performance? And they always say, no, I'm not satisfied. And do you know why they say that whenever cable, whenever I give the task to my team, they never complete it on time. And do you know why the biggest reason is in business owners nowadays, how are they giving the task to your, their team? First of all, either they're just uh, emailing it to them or they're giving the task to the team on just the WhatsApp or just the call. They're not using any single system to delegate the task. Second, they don't have any process to actually jot down and see the performance of the employees. So overall, you can write down task delegation process. Then uh, you can talk about hiring process as well. How do you hire employees, right? Then you can talk about then leave approval process when somebody asks for the leave. Is this randomly they text you that, I want to leave or is there any approval process as well now let's talk about the accounts in terms of accounts it can be the payment collection process vendor onboarding process uh, material purchase process right how are you collecting the payments is there if there any vendors involved in your, in your business how are you onboarding them and if you are purchasing some material from your vendors is there any process to that as well so the step one you have completed now you have written down the names of the processes which are actually relevant to your business, right? Congratulations. Uh, write down in the comments that if you have completed it. Let's go to the next step. Now, I want you to pick up just one process out of all the processes that you have jot down. It can be sales, uh, inquiry to customer process. It can be leave approval process. It can be vendor onboarding process. It can be task delegation process. Just one process, pick it up, okay? And I'll tell you, there are a lot of tools, including the uh, Google diagrams uh, or draw.io. Draw draw.io is the tool through which you can uh, design the whole process. And when it comes to the designing, you need to just focus on three points on designing the process or defining the process. Firstly, uh, data collection. Who is entering the data and where and how? Second is, I'll explain each and everything in detail. Uh, just hold on. Second is data management. When data gets entered, either in the Google form or in the Excel, how are you managing it? And who are the stakeholders with whom this data is being shared? And thirdly, how are you creating the report out of it? Now, when it comes to the report, you need to finalize, you need to find out KPIs, key performance indicators from that process, uh, which if you look at through that report, you find out that whether that process is working fine or not, whether people or stakeholders or employees who are working on that process are performing good or not. Now, I'm going to tell you that these three steps, data collection, data management and sharing and business reporting, how you can uh, automate or, or automate all these three steps using Google applications, right? Now, you might have never heard of this or you might have already using this, but Google applications are the best applications when it comes to for small and medium enterprises because these applications are flexible, these applications are cheap, and they are really easy to implement as well. And in my programs, which are run called Master of Business Automation, I train you guys on all the Google application and I give you ready-made tools through which you can automate your business in less than eight weeks. Now, let's talk about the step uh, like the point one of defining the process, which is data collection. Okay. Now what you can do is you can create a Google form. What you can do, create a Google form. Uh, Google form is that kind of technology through which you can uh, collect any kind of data. For example, uh, you want to create a leave form, leave application form. So employees just fill up that leave application in the Google form and you collect the data. You want to Take the customer feedback. So you create a customer feedback form where customers share their name, email, and their experience on how was their experience with you. Uh, you want to 
take the tax details or GST details from your clients so, or maybe customer onboarding process. So you give a form to your client, you ask them to just fill it up. They fill up their name, location, uh, their GST number, other tax details, and you get the, their data, right? So G Google form you can create for data collection. Second is data management sharing. Now, if you're using Excel, you cannot automate your business. I'll tell you, you need to shift from Excel to Google Sheets. Google Sheet and Excel are almost same in, to, in terms of experience. However, Google Sheet give you those kind of functions through which you can actually automate each and every process out of it. So upload your Excel data into Google Sheet. There are a lot of other tutorials on my Google on my YouTube channel where you can find out how to convert an Excel file into Google Sheet. Okay, so connect the Google form which you've created with Google Sheets. Okay, and uh, data which is being entered into the Google form will automatically come out to the Google Sheet. Thirdly, you need to find out uh, that Google Sheet which is capturing the data from Google form uh, with all stakeholders, with all employees, uh, which all employees you need to share it with. Okay, and share it with them and find out what data these employees need to enter in Google Sheet besides uh, the data which has already been entered into the Google form, if it is required or not. Okay, and if you just need to want to share it with them, you can share it. If you want them to enter some new data as well, after that, you can do that. Okay, and that all you can actually get to know when you define the entire process. And finally, uh, when you have created a Google form, you have created a Google sheet which is become the Google, picking up the data from Google form. And when you share it with your employees, then finally, the last step on the step. Three is when you are automating it is create a business report. Now there is a tool in Google application which is called Google Data Studio, which you can connect with Google Sheets and you can easily using drag and drop, you can create a beautiful business dashboard and you can create a line graph, column graph or pie graph, you know, sharing with you the insights of the performance of the employees and the performance of the uh, process as well. And so Till now we have covered three steps. First was uh, writing down all the processes that you think you should have in your business and you should automate. Step two was picking up any easy process and writing down the steps on that, what all you need to do. Data collection point, data management point, and business reporting point. Step three on how can you actually now implement it using Google application. Create a Google form, connect with Google Sheet, share it with your employees, and uh, then create a business report out of it. Now. Step four is that now you have you build up a system, you actually train your team, you are, in, invite your employees who are going to use that system. Uh, if your employees are entering the return Google form, train them on this, that, okay, this is a form. And uh, whenever you want to uh, start this process, just start by entering the data here. The benefit, first benefit that you will have is that instead of using the Excel on using uh, for the data entry, when you use the Google form, uh, you get rid of so many data entry errors okay because when you ask them to enter the data in excel what they do is they end up making data entry mistakes and that is where you instead of automating it you actually destroy your process so when you use the google form you actually get rid of all the uh, entry data entry errors right now tell me how was this insight type in the comment right now after that you train your team on Google Sheets as well. If they need to enter some data on that, uh, you can train them on that. And just wait and watch. For one week, run a pilot for one week and see how your team is using the system and how the report is coming out of it, okay? And in that week where you're running the pilot on the system, make sure that your employees actually enter the data in the system. Because if they don't enter the data, you will never actually get to know that how is it working and how efficient you and your employees are becoming and how much time are they saving and how much uh, error free are you making your process and your organization. So step four was train your team on how to use the system. Now last two steps which are pending. Do you want to know what are these two steps? Before that, I again request you, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button as well. Now, step five is that uh, analyze the process for one week, okay, and find out, take the feedback from your team as well on what do they suggest and see by yourself as well that is there any improvement required in the Google form or did you forget on taking a couple of other data entry points and tweak the system after one week if required. 
and then what after the tweaking make it live for everybody make the system of google applications live for everybody and finally the last step is analyze the performance of kpis uh, from the business report that you have just created on uh, google data studio uh, use the process and just relax and wait and watch because now data entry is being done by one employee other data management is being done by other employees and you're just relaxing wait you're just watching on how the entire process is working uh, and if it is a sales process system then you're seeing how is the sales going on day or day or week or week or month on month what is a top selling product uh, who is your top sales person who is performing the best if it is the uh, leave approval app process then you're actually watching who is taking most of the leaves and your uh, senior employees are actually approving it because they have the sheet and you're just seeing who has pending how many holidays they're pending and who uh, is actually not taking too many leaves and different different examples and once you automate your one process you will actually get to know the power of it and after that what you can do you can repeat the, all these steps for other processes now one thing i know for sure that uh, if you are not from a technology background then it can become a little difficult for you to implement on your own agree with me type agree if you agree with me in the on the chat box on the comments of this video now i'll just give you a brief about how i can help you so i am into business automation past 8 years while well, on this date uh, and i've helped more than 4000 business owners across 25 industries including manufacturing trading construction and 23 other service providing uh, industries and i've helped them to automate all their processes in less than 8 weeks and right now these business owners are running their entire operations working just one hour a day okay and the program that i have for all all these people and for all you guys is master of business automation program which is an online course which you can actually sign up right now okay and i'm providing a 7 days free trial to all of you in to if you want to automate your entire business okay now uh, if you have got the value in this video please make sure you share it with it with your friends and in the next videos i'm going to share with you more on business automation uh, specifically on how to automate your sales process how to create more, get more clients how to increase more and more team performance so keep watching my videos keep enjoying and keep automating your business thank you so much keep automating and keep scaling take care bye bye